now let me get on to James. I've talked about James a lot. Now let me talk about what James said in James chapter 1 and James chapter 2. Basically, he said that following the law, excuse me, sets, sets you free. Now, in the old system, being a good servant of God would exalt you. But the problem is, is that nobody could be a good servant of God because we're all incapable of being that. This is why what God's grace depended on was your faith. And when your faith believed that it needed to needed to to accept the fact that you could not be good enough to please God, then your faith used the sacrifice, which was Jesus Christ ultimately. But this is why there was blood on the altar, and everyone's like, "Well, that's cruelty to animals." Well, who knows if Jesus Christ is in heaven and those sacrifices were made? Who knows if God didn't take every one of those sacrifices and they're all up in heaven now, all those sheep and rams and whatever they are, and we'll be petting them later and they'll be like, I was just like Jesus. I was showing Christ. And they'll talk to you. And you'll be like, that's crazy. They thought, well, we're, in, in the Bible, you might think it, it, it's crazy that, that animals talk, but animals talked. And you, you might think that that's nuts. Well, I don't really care because the foolish things will, will be shown at the end. See, it's a spiritual thing. Um, but anyway, um, the idea of having faith to trust in the sacrifice, but also there was a trust in works. And this is where James and the Jews couldn't, they were blinded. And yes, James was blinded because he, because Peter was afraid of men that came from James and withdrew from the Gentile table and went to eat with the kosher Jews. And the Jews had insisted that the Gentiles and everybody had to keep the Old Covenant laws in order to be saved. When those Old Covenant laws, by the way, were, were swept away by the blood of Christ. And there's evidence of that because Peter was eating at that table. And Peter did see a vision of God dropping, bringing down animals in a sheet saying, kill and eat these unkosher animals. And it was so he could witness to the Gentiles and eat with the Gentiles because that had, all of those animals were, were a sign that these are the animals that cannot die for your sins because they're unclean. They're not like the lamb, the chosen Jesus Christ. But now that the Christ came, the law of eating these animals was gone, but the Jews would not let that go. And so James was saying that if you follow the law, God will make you happy. But Paul was saying that that brought a curse upon us because nobody could ultimately follow the law. So what was the balance struck? I don't hold it against James that he didn't see the vision of, of what Paul saw. And I think later on he probably did, and there may have been a consensus. But the reason why James said that by, by following the law you'll be exalted is because that's what Moses said. If you stay on the path and do not swerve to the left or to the right and do what is right, God will give you, will, 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 will give you money. He will, he will make you prosperous. It was doing good to make yourself prosperous. So this is what made a terrible tyranny among the Jews. The Jews became, you're, not, you're, you're an unrighteous person if you don't have money. But that wasn't the case because we will have tribulation and in the end, yeah, we'll be exalted in heaven. But that was the system that was in place. And is there a system now? Yes, I believe there is. Because just because we have been separated from the law by the blood of Jesus Christ does not mean that there is not an order. There's not a kingly type order where I am in a court of nobles. When I come before the throne of grace, I come to the throne in the spirit of royal grace, and I ask God for, in respect and honor to God, like a father, like like God is my father, and I'm honoring my father. There is an order. Um, I live my life according to the order. So, but Paul was saying that we're no longer under the law, and they were accusing him of being lawless. 
That's not true. And yes, by following the law the right way, there is a certain amount of happiness because if you, if you do what's out of the kingly order, you will be disciplined. But what happens is, is that when you start to judge yourself instead of letting God's grace rule your life, you will start to become a tyrant to yourself, making you more and more perfect like Mary and Martha. Martha was the perfectionist that didn't have to do anything. And Mary was the one that sat at Christ's feet. And the lesson here is that when you start to become that way, then you start to, to lose the idea that God loves you in spite of you, not that God lo God's going to love you any more or any less if you don't follow the law perfectly. But we still follow an order. I still come to him and pray. I still, I still, um, you know, act in in a court etiquette type way because if you look at the letters that Paul wrote to to to, to authoritative figures, he used the, a very respectful tone to people who didn't deserve to be respected. But that is the order of things on this earth. God, Paul was a slave also, and Christians were slaves and enslaved. But in their slavery, there's an honor. You never lose your dignity as a Christian, you see. And, but you never lord it over other people and make, and this is what the Jews did. They, they were like John and it was like James and John. What happened was, is they wanted to be able to get rewarded in heaven and have a place in the heaven where they have authority. And having authority in heaven is important. But the problem is, is that authority comes, if you look at it in perspective, from washing one another's feet. This is why Christ washed their feet, because Christ was showing that he was not so much a master as much as he was a servant. And you cannot handle a position of authority unless you learn to be a servant. And this is what the Jews did not get. So it's important to be put in a position of authority and to want a position of authority. But it's equally important to understand that if you gain that position of authority, not having a position of being a, serv a servant or a slave, you will become a tyrant. And you will not deserve that. You will be a fool put in the wrong place. And so I desire to have a position of authority. But I absolutely do not desire to lord anything over my fellow man. I, my job is to show my fellow servants how to be a servant so that they can become and have positions of authority to show other people the grace and servitude of Jesus Christ. Thank you. Have a great day.